to de um, determine <coughs> what type of statistical test will be would be used. So you ready? Question 13. A study was conducted to investigate whether oat bran cereal helps to lower cholesterol in males with high cholesterol. Fourteen such individuals were randomly placed on a diet which in included either oat bran or cornflakes. After two weeks, their LDL cholesterol levels were recorded. Each man was then switched to alternative diet. After a second week period, the LDL cholesterol of each individual was then recorded. What type of statistical test should be used to test the null hypothesis that the mean LDL levels are equal in each diet group? Yeah. Paired. 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 Why is it paired? Because it's one group, but it's... One person, right? But they're getting both treatments. Exactly. So yeah. there's two measurements, so two treatments for the same person. If they asked if, it, if there was a difference in the means, it would be, would we say one sample? Yes. Oh. Exactly. If there's a difference in the mean, that's the type of statistical test you would use. And you would uh, set your test value at zero. So ready to move on to 14. In a study of pregnancy-induced hypertension, one group of women was treated with low-dose aspirin and a second group was given a placebo. Arterial blood pressure was determined for each woman. Which type of statistical test should be used to test the null hypothesis that the mean arterial blood pressure is the same in both treatment groups? Two sample. Two sample. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We have women that are randomized to one of two groups. Theoretically, there's nothing similar about them. They're not twins. So if they were similar, what if it was two separate groups, but they were similar? It would be a matched. It would probably be a matched pair study. You'd probably still want to do the more conservative two-sample t-test, okay. but you could do. So if there's a question with like twins who are getting different treatments, would twins? you still say? It depends. I mean, likely twins would be matched. If they lived in the same house, they grew yeah. up the same, and they're identical. Fraternal twins would not be the same. They'd just yeah. be siblings, and they'd be independent. So we typically use matched for twins. Um, but more frequently, we use matched for the same person, like before and after. We'll take a measurement before the treatment. We'll take a measurement after the treatment. And then we have 15. After an outbreak of gastroenteritis following a lunch served in an event at the Temple University Student Center, you were charged <coughs> with investigating the cause. Which type of statistical test should be used to test the null hypothesis that the proportion of students becoming ill among those who ate the lunch at the event is equal to the proportion becoming ill among those who did not eat the lunch at the event? So for those of you who are taking epi, what does this remind you of? I'm taking it and I don't know. I was going to say chi square. It's chi square. Two it's two by two table, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You're looking at proportions. So, what are you? What can you get out of this? What kind of epidemiological measures could you potentially find in addition to chi square? Like relative risk ratios or odd ratios. Which one? One of those. So, incidence or prevalence? Incidence. Incidence, right? So, new cases, new cases of all yeah. that are at risk, yes. yeah. right? And when we have incidence, do we do relative risk or odds ratio? Uh, relative risk. Relative risk, oh. right? Incidence in those <laughs> exposed over incidence oh, wow. of those not exposed. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> 
I just tried to tie yeah. yours to the next <laughs> class, no, but it was epi. Yeah. Yeah. This is an epi question, and we would apply chi-square to determine if there's a difference between the groups, not mm -hmm. just to compare <coughs> ratios. So you would have your relative risk, you'd give it your number, right? There's a greater risk if mm -hmm. you eat at SAC of developing a stomach bug with your p-value. Because now you have to say, is this significant? Is this important? Now you're going to have a p-value with your chi-square. And chi-square, just think about that. You're just you're examining proportions, differences in proportions. Yeah. So are we ready to move on to do some kind of some chi-square and proportional type? Questions? Alright. The Temple Times polled a simple random sample of 280 Temple undergraduates in order to study student attitudes towards a proposed change in dormitory regulation. Students responded as either support, oppose, or neutral with regards to this issue. So, and this is how it came out. Uh, 162 support, 75 are neutral, 53 opposed, and we have a total N of 290. So suppose that Temple Times suspects that half of the students support the change in the regulation, 15 of them oppose, leaving 35% to be neutral. What would be the null hypothesis for a chi-square based on this suspicion? Supporting students is point point five. Point five. Point the five. proportion of opposing students is point five. And the proportion point of neutral students is point three. Five. Yeah, simple enough. So you have to do so all three of them. So chi squared is always proportional. Yes. Okay. So it's almost a dead giveaway. You look for these keywords. So what would the null be then? That would be the null. That would be the null. Mm -hmm. And then the alternative would just be not, not. equal. Mm -hmm. So you could have like multiple, like null and multiple. Yes. Okay. And we can write this out in like English? Yes. Okay. Um, if you can, I would write out, well, because here you're not testing a mu, mm -hmm. you're testing a proportion. So it would be P. P. So be careful. So you can just write out P like. Equals 0.5. Exactly. P o equals 0.15. Exactly. Exactly. So be careful. I know in this last quiz I had people write out all sorts of funny looking hypotheses, mm -hmm. null hypotheses, because I had a lot of mu equals zero. Um, <laughs> okay. And you said the alternative, the alternative would be that it's just not equal that, like for each level. Okay. So under the null hypothesis, what is the value if expected count for students who oppose the proposed change in dormitory regulations? So what's the expected count? I'll call it EC. What's our formula? Oh. From back in the day, right? Oh, you don't do those times column over N? It's just 44. But that's for something else, though. Okay. Why don't you do row times column over N? And we're just, um, it is row times column over n because we only have one column. <coughs> oh, so it would be 44? No, it would be 43.5. We would use an exact proportion. Even though you can't have half a person. 
Because we're not asking how many do you need. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're doing 53 times. Yes. No, 290 because that's the end. 290 times So you can have. You can have, can have a person, have person. if you're not asked how many people do you need, how many dogs do you need, yeah. Okay. So if you, you can have half a person when we're referring to the exact proportion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or the expected count. So um, they say that oppose is 15%, but when you do the math, it's 18%. Like 53 divided by 290? 0.18? This is our hypothesis. This is not actually what it is. Okay. So, uh, question 16 is not saying our proportion that okay. opposed is actually 15%. It's not <coughs> saying <coughs> this is our null hypothesis. We think that it might be this. Okay. So, so under testing, the null hypothesis. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So, if you wanted to do row times column over n, you should get the same number. Let's do it. Row times column. So would it be um, 53, right? Because it's a pose. But we're looking for the null. That's the that's the key. We're not looking at the um, expected count. count based on no hypothesis. We're, we're looking for an expected count based on a given hypothesis. Row times column over n. Because what would be your row and what would be your column? Mm. You would just end up back with the same row you started with. Right. Yeah, which one would be the row? Um, there is no row really. Yeah, because it's a, it's a 1 mm. by 4 table. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're looking at a hypothesis that's given. It's sort of like having a one sample chi-squared test. That's sort of what it's doing here. Normally you would have at least a two by two table, but comparing one to the other. So your expected is that one is the same as the other. That's why we do row times column over n. When we do a two by two table, we're saying the proportion and group a is the same as the proportion in group B, is the same as the proportion in group C, is the same as the, and that's why we have expected count. So and if, we can, this, if this, if there was like another. Yep. Saying we want to see if the attitudes at Drexel are the same as the attitudes at Temple. So there would be, there'd be two categorical be, variables then, so yeah. that's why it would be, okay. We'd have two proportions to compare, right. and in this case, we're not comparing it to another proportion of or population. We're comparing it to an all hypothesis, so we would use our proportions, the rule for proportions, because we're looking for proportions. <coughs> okay. But yeah, if we had a uh, if we had a two by two table or bigger, it would be row times column over n. So what is the expect? What is the value of the chi-square <coughs> statistic? So how do we calculate chi-square? Mm -hmm. Sum of all the expected values. Sum of all the observed. Observed minus expected. Okay. Over. Over expected. We've already got our expected, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to get our expected for so it would be like 145 voter supporting. 100. Okay, so let's do support. 145 observed was 162. Expected was 145, right? Over, did you get over 145, right? Yeah. And this is squared. Plus, what do we get for 